What's up everybody? I am finally ready to present to you the mustache minnow. This is a pattern I've been working on and perfecting for a while, and I'm finally happy with what I've settled on, so let's do this. So it may seem a little bit weird that I'm using a tube jig head, but you will see the importance of that later on. This is a 1 32nd ounce tube jig head. You can use a bigger one if you'd like, but I found this one to be about the perfect size. And the way it fishes with the weight and everything makes it look like a real bait fish in the water. Alright, so to get started, we're going to be using a white uni thread. This is a 6 aught thread. We're going to start that right behind the tube jig head and just do a tiny bit. For the tail, we're going to be using a single marabou feather. So I'm just going to run my fingers over that feather from the stem to line the tips up. We want the length on this one to be a little bit longer than usual, so it's going to be just a little bit longer than the hook itself. We're going to tie that in right where our thread is. Just give it a few really tight turns to make sure we keep it in place. Then we can cut the butt end. We're going to go over the fluffy part now to clean that up a little. And we want to check it to make sure it's tight and straight. Alright, for the underbody, we're going to be using Hairline Ice Dub. I'm going to use tan and gray. So I'm going to mix these two colors, just get an even amount of each. And just start mixing the colors by pulling the fibers apart. Just keep doing that until you have a nice even color like this. And then we're going to stack the fibers, so pull them apart and line the tips up. Just keep doing that until they're kind of hard to pull apart. Now we're going to split our thread. Or you could use a dubbing loop if you'd like, but we're not going to be adding too much, so I like to just split the thread. Then we're going to take our dubbing fibers, place those right in the middle so that there's an even amount on both sides. And we're going to separate the fibers this way. Just distribute them so that you have about 4 or 5 inches of dubbing. Now we're going to spin our bobbin. I like to spin it clockwise. Just keep twisting it. And then we can grab our thread and pull it straight. This will twist the dubbing up. We want to twist it up a good amount. And once we get one wrap of that dubbing over the body, we can twist it even more. Watch out for the marabou tail fibers, make sure they don't get stuck in that. And we're just going to start winding our dubbing now. We want to pull the fibers back each time, like this. Just with each turn, pull the previous fibers back. And then take our thread up right behind the eye of the hook. Now we're going to take a Velcro. This is my Stonfo tool. It has Velcro on one side and a comb on the other side. I would definitely recommend getting one of these. We're just going to brush that out all over the dubbing there. And right under the hook point, we want to make sure we brush that out. And once we've gone over all of that, we can just pull the loose fibers that want to come out. Alright, so now for the material that will really bring this jig to life and make it look realistic. This is Bruiser Blend Junior by Flyfish Food and Hairline. I'm going to use a gray for the top and a cream for the bottom. So we're going to start with the top, we're just going to take a clump of that gray and stack the fibers just like we did with the ice dub. Just pull the fibers apart and stack up the ends. We're going to turn that over since that's going to be the top. And we're going to place that over the eye, just create a little gap for the eye of the hook. And we want about one third of the fibers to go over the body and then two thirds to go over the top of the jig. We're just going to tie that down with a couple really tight wraps. Make sure it looks the way you want it. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see better. Now we're going to grab a clump of the cream. We want this clump to be about the same as the gray. And stack those fibers as well. We want the length to be the same. About a third going over the body and two thirds going over the top of the jig. We're going to tie that in with a couple really tight turns. Now we're going to fan these fibers out sideways. You can see what I mean there. I'm going to do the same thing with the gray. And now we're going to take the gray and fold it over the top. 
and then tie those down. So we're going over all of that dubbing. Just give it two really tight wraps. And then flip that over, do the same thing with the cream. Fold it over and do two really tight wraps just barely over those fibers. And then we're going to move our thread out of the way, put it above the dubbing. And this is where we're going to whip finish. So just take your time here, be really careful not to let your thread fall over the head of the tube jig. Now we're going to cut our thread. As you can see, there's a little bit of a gap where we can see that tube jig head. So to fix that, we're going to grab a tiny bit of the cream and the gray fibers and just wiggle them back and forth, and that covers that. Now we're going to take the comb side of our Stonfo tool and just comb through that whole body. Just make sure you cover all of it, including the hook point. You can see some of those bruiser blend fibers want to come out, so you can just pull those off. Now we're going to add some color and some eyes to this thing. So I'm going to take a light orange, this is a yellow orange sharpie, and we're going to color it on the bottom where the cream is and just do a little bit of orange all around, cover the thread, and then go about a quarter of an inch onto the body of that. Just keep it on the cream dubbing. Perfect. Now we're going to grab a fine point yellow sharpie, and we're just going to dot the edges of that orange. Just barely dot the edges there. This will give it a nice fade. Alright, that looks good. And now we're going to use our fingers to smear that ink. We're just going to rub that so that it smears a little bit. It creates a nice faded effect like that. Alright, now we're going to pinch those fibers so that they're fanned out a bit, up and down. Just like that. And for the eye, I'm going to be using a 3 16th gold holographic 3D eye. Before we put the eye on, we're going to flatten the head a little. You want to use a pair of pliers or something that has a flat jaw. Line that up and pinch it right at the thread. Not too hard, just give it a little bit of a pinch to flatten it out a bit. You want to make sure you use the flat part, because if you use a ribbed jaw, it can destroy your thread. Now we're going to take the eyes just one at a time. Just put them right on the flat side there. We want to cover the tube jig head and make it go just a little bit over the dubbing. Alright, that looks good. Now we're going to put a tiny bit of resin to hold those eyes in place. You want to make sure that the resin is touching from eye to eye, both on the upper and lower sides. That'll just keep those eyes held in place while we form the head. Then we're going to hit that with a UV light to cure it. I would definitely recommend getting a UV cure resin. And now we're going to form the head using that same resin. This is Loon Flow. Just going to cover that whole head with a thick layer. We can always remove the excess, so don't be shy. Just cover that whole head, cover the eyes and everything. Just make sure it doesn't get on the dubbing yet, because we're going to place it on the dubbing strategically. Now we're going to use our bodkin to distribute that evenly and create a nice round head for this minnow. Again, avoid the dubbing. We want to make sure we get the resin in all the little gaps so that the head is sealed. And now we're going to push the resin just slightly into the dubbing. Just be really careful not to get too much. Just barely touching the dubbing, both on the upper and lower side. And once you've got that evenly distributed, you can take your UV light. Just hit it for 15 to 30 seconds, should do it. Make sure we get all the little gaps there. So now the head should be cured hard. Uh, if you use a tacky UV resin, you can put a hard resin over that just to make sure it's not tacky at all. And that's it. That is the mustache minnow.
As you can see, this thing has a really nice bait fish profile. Now let's get it wet and we'll see the real magic. So take a look at that. Look how realistic that looks. You can see it has a super nice bait fish profile. When you look at it from the top or bottom, it's a little bit flat, just like a real shad or bait fish. You can see that fade from the Sharpie gives it a super cool look. And you can see that UV ice dub underneath the body just makes it pop and look just like a real fish. There's just nothing more realistic than this, really. So, there are a lot of colors of ice dub. There's a lot of colors of bruiser blend you can mix and match. I'm going to be tying a lot of different color variations of this pattern, so stay tuned for those. I hope you enjoyed. I worked on this project for a long time. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and please consider subscribing.